Big Brother Canada 4 has come to a close, which means it's time for another edition of the Reality TV We're Happy Hour. What's going on, everybody? My name's Jordan Parhar, and I'm with you once again to break down the latest 90-minute episode of Big Brother Canada 4. And with me is another member of the Big Brother Canada family. Uh, you, I mean, I don't know if she really has, like, a, you can add, like, a slay to her name, like some other people, but although I think, like, slay is just a common verb associated with her name, uh, she's widely beloved in the community uh, by, by all, really. How can you not? I mean, she's great. Uh, she was recently named the greatest Big Brother Canada player ever, according to Brent Wagamont, Taryn Armstrong, Alex Kidwell, and Mike Bloom. It's the great Netta Kalantar, ladies and gentlemen. Netta, how are you? I'm good. How much did my mom pay you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't, don't tell. Don't, Netta, come on. Don't, don't. You're ruining the secret. Come on. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, it's okay. Just, just, we'll, we'll, we'll edit that part out. Uh, and uh, with me, as always, is a live feed correspondent tonight. We're joined by uh, the very fashionable Brent Walgamont. Brent, you're looking great tonight, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know to everybody out there who's watching, you see Nick. Oh no, Brent froze. Oh no! Uh, and then you see me, this is sort of like in the third act, and you're like, "Why is this person here? We have uh, this star of the show." But yeah, I'm here with you to help you out with the live feeds. We can Love just it, pretend Brent. like we totally heard what he said yeah, and just yeah. nod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Brent, you froze a little bit, so. Uh, oh just, my God! Seriously? Okay, yeah, but I, it's, I, okay. it's okay. It's <laughs> okay. Well, okay. If it happens again, I'm totally out because this is such an important show. I really don't want to. I don't want to glitch it up for you guys tonight. No, Brent, it's okay. Don't worry. We'll figure okay. it out. If you so, if you guys listening, uh, we are live on a Google Hangout. Uh, you may have noticed Brent froze a little bit. His internet is a little uh, acting up tonight. But uh, yeah. even, Brent, even even you know the blabs, you know, seem to mess you up. And now it's the Google. Ha you know what it is, Brent? You got a new computer. The yes. new computer is good with blab, but now it's bad with the Google Hangout. Maybe that's what the problem is. <laughs> so there you go. So now we, we need to we need to get you two computers. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us live. We really appreciate you uh, coming on with us today. So what we're going to do is we're going to recap the latest episode of Big Brother Canada. There are no spoilers really, so uh, no need to worry about that. We'll talk about uh, Levita or Kelsey maybe going back into the house. We'll talk about the Dallas eviction. Uh, we'll take your questions. Should be a lot of fun. If you want to get a question in for us, there's two ways you can do that. You can leave a comment on the YouTube video, or you can tweet me. I'm at Jordan Parhart. Use the hashtag Rehappy Hour, and we'll get into those later on in the show. Okay, guys, let's talk about, uh, you know, really interesting episode tonight. 90 minutes, um, but I, I don't really know. Did this episode need to be 90 minutes long, Netta? No. <laughs> right? Well, like, we... <laughs> the episode that they showed did not need to be 90 minutes. The episode that they could have had needed to be 90 minutes tonight. So, yeah, why don't you explain that a little bit more, Brent, because you've been watching the feeds for, it's been a pretty crazy for the last 48 hours or so. I saw Taryn Armstrong tweet that the edit was very poorly done tonight. Uh, so, could you just elaborate on what really we missed from the edited version of the television show tonight? Oh, I mean, there, there's so much. I mean, I, I, I barely know where to start. I mean, I basically know where this timeline, you know, skewed off into an alternate timeline. Um, it was basically when Jared did something totally benevolent and selfless, which is something uncommon in the Big Brother Canada house. And he decided, you know, because he was working with the brothers, they just saved him at the last double eviction. He decided to tell them, you know, not for nothing, but Maddie was actually considering putting you guys up during the double eviction. And I just wanted to let you know that since we're working together. Well, you know, he, he said that to them, but in a week where Maddie's on the block, what, what's, what does he think is the logical uh, course for, you know, that, uh, for that exercise to take? So, of course, they started getting a little bit jumpy. Cassandra was already jumpy about keeping Maddie in the house. And, um, you know, the train went from there. We can dissect everything that happened. The vote must have flipped at least four or five times. Um, but uh, I, I, I will say this, that everybody who voted tonight, I believe, voted with the intention that they were in the majority. So there was definitely a few surprised faces when it came up five to three the wrong way. Yeah, I was, I mean, it, it kept going back and forth. I was really interested, like, interested in how this vote was going to play out. Uh, Netta, were you surprised that Dallas ultimately was the one who went home? No, I wasn't surprised, but I want to ask, what exactly happened today on the live feeds between, like, Nikki and stuff? Because it 
did it come down to her? Is that what was happening on feeds? Yeah, yes. yeah, Brent, yeah, if you could elaborate on that and just talk about the, the potential tie situation as well. Sure. Well, the week started basically with Tim saying, you know, I'm above all this. Um, you, you know, the House can decide, um, and I'm not going to be involved in it. Well, you guys can vote however you want. Well, that sort of morphed as the week went on, and Tim got more and more invested in Dallas staying and Maddie going because Tim is more aligned with Cassandra, and Cassandra is in his ear. And whether Tim wants to admit it or not, um, Tim is being at least influenced by Cassandra. And uh, Dallas, to his credit, did a good job of pitching things. Um, a lot of things happened, but today it did ultimately come down to Nikki and Ramsey. I felt like Ramsey was always going to vote for Maddie to stay. But uh, Nikki, you know, Mitch did a good job, um, and Tim did a poor job because Nikki and Tim, you know, they've been fighting. Nikki's been getting more and more mad at Tim spending time with Cassandra. Yes, this was basically an emotional decision. Uh, Nikki ultimately voted to keep Maddie in the house because she wants Maddie to go after Cassandra. That's where this all, uh, that's, where, that's what she wants to have happen. Where this all started was the whole bathroom gate when on Monday or Sunday, I think, um, Nikki wanted to use the uh, bathtub and Cassandra used it before she did. Yes, I'm serious. I, um, this is what it's come down to in Big Brother Canada, Netta. I'm not kidding. Um, Tim let Cassandra use the ba the bathtub, and you know, uh, he basically didn't let Nikki use it that night. And Nikki got all pissed about it. And I thought she was over it, but then she brought it all back up today. And it's it, it's just been a cluster f, Jared. It's just like I I'm, I'm really like I'm thinking like somebody's game is going to change based on the fact that somebody didn't get to get into the bathtub at a certain time. That's what's going to happen today. Uh, Annetta, did you notice that Brent just called me Jared? How I did, I did. I'm did I so say that? honored. I'm, oh, so, I'm so honored, sorry. Brent. Thank I've you. I've never done that. I've called wow. you Mary. I've called you Mary, but not Jared. Yes. I wasn't going to say anything, but I was what? like, oh, maybe it's like a secret nickname they have for each I, other. I don't even remember. I, it, Alzheimer's is setting in, Jordan. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. Go ahead. Brent, Brent, just blame the internet connection. That was okay, uh, yes. somehow that. I really, I really said you. Jordan. I didn't say that. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Oh man, that's oh Brent, you made my Thursday unbelievable. Right? I mean, I I thought this episode would have made it, but uh, no, I'm, it's kind of I'm, actually, and... I'm flushing right now. I'm sorry, that's terrible. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, well, Netta, let's talk about this. Okay, so Nikki, I mean, really, I mean, this is basically a strategist's worst nightmare, right? For someone like you, if you're in that house and you need to convince someone to vote your way. Uh, and and it's someone like Nikki who you just can't trust. Don't you kind of? I mean, everyone's saying Nikki's just gonna stay around to the end. She's you know why would you get rid of her? She's not a threat. But don't you kind of need to get rid of this person because nobody can really ever count on Nikki a as a vote. Yeah, it's hard when you have people that you're playing with who don't think logically. Because like as a logical person, you assume when you tell them things, they're gonna understand it in a normal way. But I think by this point, people know that Nikki's not logical, and if you want to get her to do something, you have to appeal to her emotions. So yes. it's more the people's fault in the house. They should know how to influence her by now. Don't speak to her logically. Speak to her in a way that she's gonna understand. And and Jer uh, I almost did it again. You're oh, right. No. I, I, I call myself. Wow, I've never done that in a year and a half of knowing you. That's so. I must have Jared on the brain. I'm so sorry. Brett, uh, no, he, Brett, keep it coming. Call he, me he, Jared all night. I'll take I, it. I, I, I can deal with more scenes of uh, him walking out of the shower and having a five minute conversation with everybody. I'll just say that. Um, so no, for real. The one person in the house who is very good at emotionally connecting with Nikki is Mitch. Um, he did a good job of making sure that you know if you vote, if you vote. If if you want to vote the other way, I'm still your friend. You know, uh, Tim should be your friend because he said that everybody can vote how they want to vote, and now he's trying to control you. So, you know, what kind of a friend is that? He also made sure that uh, Maddie or that uh, Nikki got a little upset over uh, Cass having double dealings with Maddie because, on one hand, Cassandra had made a deal with Maddie that you know. It's, uh, you know, we're the last two original girls in the house and we need to look out for each other. But, of course, behind the scenes, she's secretly working to get her out of the house. And Tim, or uh, Mitch wanted to make sure that uh, Nikki was aware of this because she hates Cassandra. And uh, the other thing he did was he just made sure that Nikki, 
he appealed to her on an emotional level where I felt like he got to her because he said, you know, Nick, or, uh, uh, he's made a, or Dallas has made a few jokes about me. He's made a few uh, gay jokes, a few AIDS jokes, and I don't think Nikki felt terribly great about Dallas as a person. And uh, I think that's why she ultimately probably voted him out of the house and the fact that she didn't get her bathwater on time. And she was pissed. To, <laughs> she was pissed, and she wants Cassandra out of the house. She wants Tim all to herself. She doesn't have the attention on her. That's what this is about. So basically what this came down to then, Brent, correct me if I'm wrong, is it was a civil war between – or maybe not a civil war, but a war between Mitch and, and Tim, and, and Mitch is the one who came out on top here. Yes and no. I wouldn't say that Tim was the ringleader. He eventually got his hands dirty, but I would say it was more Cassandra and the brothers, mainly Phil. Um, I'm, is Nick even on the show anymore? Nope. I'm sorry. Um, it's all Phil at this point. He's leading the charge. He's telling his little brother what to do. Phil really wanted... It's so funny because last week he was all for working with Jared, and this week he's all about keeping Dallas so that Dallas can go after Jared. And uh, I felt like that that would be a really good partnership between the brothers and Jared because they're two mega alpha males, but uh, apparently they just didn't see it that way. It was the brothers and Cassandra effectively working against Mitch. That's how I saw it. Well, Mitch has been very impressive so far. I mean, I've loved his game. Uh, Netta, I'm sure you appreciate the, the Black and Saint uh, shout-out from Mitch. Uh, what do you think about Mitch's game now moving forward? Because now we're going to have one of these, uh, you know, Levita or Kelsey is going to go back into this house, and they could potentially blow up his entire game. Yeah, well, I like Mitch. He's been my pick to win from the beginning before he wore the shirts. Uh, <laughs> I think that he could have laid low a little bit longer. Um, I think it would have helped him get a little bit further. But if Levita comes back in and she says anything about Mitch, I don't think that many people are going to really believe her. So I think it's more dangerous for him if Kelsey comes back in because um, Jared and Raul and everyone will believe her. Whereas, like, Levita's just kind of, you know, no one trusts her. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an excellent point. I mean, the social capital that that Levita has, I mean, is it's pretty much depleted just because of everything. You know, all the running around she did while she was in the house. Brent, you were going to say something. Well, I just said that uh, I, th I I I am hopeful because at the beginning of the week, you know, Taryn and I'm assuming Alex and I were just uh, besides ourselves because the girls, the two girls, Levita and Kelsey, were effectively uh, going to target Mitch when they got back into the house. That's what they were saying. They were like, you know, you know, he he's the one that's behind all this. He's the one who's flying under the radar. And as the week wore on. You know, their old feelings about some of these housemates uh, uh, came to the surface. And then I feel like they know what Mitch is up to to a certain extent, but they're willing to work with him for now. Like, everybody has basically the same opinion of Mitch, which is he's a really dangerous player. Nobody could beat him at the end, but now is not the time. And but we say that about a lot of people who end up winning. Yes. Right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And Netta. I mean, uh, you know, go back, going back to BB Can too. I mean, was that not yeah, what a lot that. of people? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that's like that. But I mean, went like a lot. I mean, a lot of people, and I'm sure this has gone through your head so many times, is like, oh my gosh, I should have got rid of John at this time or whatever. But I mean, it, 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 there's only so much you can do. I mean, it's tough without, you know. Timing is everything in life, and timing is everything in Big Brother. And I think that if they don't make a move against Mitch now, I can easily see him cruising to, to the Final Four no problem. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that, and I hope they don't make a move because I want Mitch to win. But <laughs> it's just you don't know when the right time is. Like, I mean, you look at Mitch... And as like all these new players, you're like, he's not that much of a threat to me right now. I can always get him out later. I can always get him out later. And then you see him in final two. And then he's sitting next to Nikki probably. So you're going to vote for Mitch. And That's my Mitch ideal final two, by the way. Nikki and Mitch, ideal final two. <laughs> Could you imagine a Nikki Graham final two speech? <laughs> oh, my, oh God. my goodness. That I, would I be... don't see her being evicted. I mean, who, who's going to evict her at this? Who's coming for her, as Rob would say? Well, well that, that's true, right? I mean, I think that this is something we really need to think about. And I mean, and I, you know, I, I brought up the, the fact that Nikki is an irrational player, and that's a reason that you, in which uh, people should get rid of her. But the farther she makes it, I feel like the odds just, well, I mean, obviously, because she's making it farther, but I mean, it's just exponentially, it's growing her chances of getting to that final two, because it becomes more and more attractive to take someone like that with right. you uh, to the end. I mean, uh, Netta, what, what is the scenario in which Nikki goes home now? 
she would have to win something. Like she would actually have to win like a veto or an HOH or something so that people are like, oh, she can win things. Maybe she's a threat that way because she's not going to make a logical choice. Like she's just going to make like a random choice which could affect me. But I mean, there is a lot of luck HOHs, so she could end up winning that, start making some enemies that way. That's the only way I can really see someone targeting her. Other than that, she is the perfect goat. Like. Yeah, I, I do agree with that in part, but I also do think there is a way for her to be uh, evicted if some smart people in the house, this sort of happened uh, on Frankie Grande season when they were trying to get rid of Victoria, and Frankie was saying to everybody, you know, yeah, it's great to take Victoria forward in the game, but the more you take this person forward in the game, the more that you have a better chance of going home if you end up against her on the block. So if anybody realizes, you know, I, I need to remove this pawn from the board so that other people can't use this pawn, they have to use me, then that's a way that she could go home potentially. I, I do I like, go ahead. Yeah. I, I want to make sure I, you talk about what happened today too, sorry. Yeah, for sure. And I, I do really like that point, Brent, before we move on, because I think that on this season uh, if, if there's any season in which that philosophy comes into play for people, it's this one because there are still so many huge targets left in this game. Dallas leaving kind of hurts that a little bit. But had Dallas stayed, I mean, we would have had Dallas, the bros, uh, Jared, Tim. I mean, Joel has proven that he's a threat. Mitch, I mean, it would have there would have been so many big targets left. I, I feel like, yeah, I think that they could kind of come to a truce and be like, yeah, you know what, we do have to get rid of Nikki at this point. Let's talk about Ramsey a, a little bit here. Ramsey was the other person who uh, was really imperative in this vote tonight. He could have tied things up by deciding to keep Dallas in the game, decided to keep his new show Mets, foam Mets, we don't really know what this thing is, Mets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Netta's, Netta's reaction kind of says it all. Uh, Neto, what do you think about that decision by Ramsey uh, to decide, you know what, I, you know, I want to be in this game and be labeled as a pair. I don't want to be a, a free agent. Okay, one, I just want to talk about the night they spent in bed on the feeds, which was the most awkward thing I've ever watched. <laughs> like, I literally, I couldn't, like, turn my computer off. I had to keep watching until they cut the feeds. Like, it was the most awkward I don't even know. I was, like, texting everyone from my season two. I'm like, you guys, you need to watch this. <laughs> like, anyways. But I feel like it was the wrong decision for Ramsey to keep Maddie there because now he is going to be seen as a duo. As much as he's trying not to kiss her now, it's eventually going to happen. Like, she literally begged for it, like, 300 times that night. Like, he can't keep, <laughs> he can't keep saying no. He's going to say yes eventually, and it's going to kind of bite him in the ass because there's a couple there, and no one likes Maddie, so being associated with Maddie already is so bad for you. And Dallas would have just been a stronger ally to have. So for him, I think it was really stupid to get rid of Dallas. But just, God, I get so gross out of thought of, like, Nikki. I mean, not Nikki, at um, Maddie and... <laughs> Ma Maddie and Ramsey. Maddie and Ramsey. Uh, yeah, I was, you know, I was surprised. I thought that Ramsey would because he was so reluctant from what I had seen on the feeds to to kiss her and to do this stuff, I thought, okay, well, Ramsey's thinking with his head. He's not actually gonna keep Maddie. He's gonna just, you know, he's just trying to appease her now. He's gonna vote her out. Maddie's gonna hang out with us in a few weeks in Vancouver, yeah. Netta. It's gonna be lots of fun. And ultimately, you know, he changed his mind. Brent, did it ever really did it seem that it crossed Ramsey's mind at all to to keep Dallas? I mean, he considered it, uh, you know, at least hourly to other people. I ultimately do think that, you know, although you think, oh, he's, you know, he's using his head by, you know, not wanting to kiss Maddie. He wants to kiss Maddie. I, somebody on Twitter said that um, uh, Ramsey forgot to say when he voted to Arissa that he wants to bone one of the nominees because that's essentially what he wants. He just, he won't Not do it on... essentially. He's like straight up said it in bad, yeah, like into exactly. detail. Like. He doesn't want to do it on camera. He doesn't want his family to see it. So he wants to do it, Jordan. You know, it's just that he doesn't want other people to see it. But my thing is, like, when you talk so, like, explicitly about something, like, why not just do it? You're already, like, your parents are already, like, cringing, like, listening to that when you go right. so into detail. <laughs> just right. do it. <laughs> yeah. Jordan, I have to tell you, uh, this night that she's talking about, like, uh, turn on the feeds, see Maddie and Ramsey in bed, close the feeds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm watching. I'm watching. It was actually really weirdly entertaining. 
Well, it was so funny, uh, for, and I'm sure there's people listening to this who uh, were watching that live that night. I mean, seeing the reactions on Twitter, uh, I was doing my homework, so I was kind of watching it like in and out, and, and just seeing the live tweets, like of what people were saying, it was amazing. And now I know, now what I know, I know what it was like for all of you guys last season watching uh, Cindy and I in a bed together. And I'm very sorry for all. You of brought you. her name up. Wow, <laughs> interesting. Hmm. Good yeah, I'm not going to lie. I would get like, like with them, I found it entertaining. With you guys, I would get mad when you guys would like <laughs> <laughs> I would like get like really angry because I was like, I want to listen to game talk. Why are they making out? Exactly. <laughs> but like with Maddie and Ramsey, there's no game talk to really listen to with them. So it's like... <laughs> Exactly. You know, I will say that Nikki's chances of getting to the final two, uh, by the way, increased exponentially by her keeping Maddie in the house because Maddie, to me, is just an, she's another goat. She's exactly like Nikki, although she has a little bit more of a comp threat status, just a little bit. But you know, she you know she won that eliminator thing. I guess she's a comp beast, whatever. Um, I mean, it, it was who, who knows? You know what I'm saying? She's basically the same person. There's no way she wins at the end. No one's gonna vote for Maddie at the end. I can't see anybody voting for Maddie to win at the end. Um, and she's exactly like Nikki. So they, that's two people you have to remove from the board. So I think there's a good chance that one of them probably makes it through. Is Maddie like Allison from um, season? Uh, Seems from like it. Season? Yeah. 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 Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Allison from BB4, you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Not not our beloved Allison from uh, not Allie. Kenner. No, yeah, not, not, not that. Not Allie Dub. Um, okay. Yeah, that's uh, no. interesting. Allison, yeah, I can kind of see that. I mean, I and she's going to get to the end, and everyone just hates her so much. <laughs> Because she like hooked up with all the guys that like they just can't vote for it. They like like actually hate her. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, did you guys see Nick? Like Nick was like when he said when he was voting tonight, he was like, "Yeah, mom, you wouldn't approve to her anyway." I was like, "Oh." I think buddy. Nick's just being bitter now because he would have continued on with her if she had wanted to. So I think exactly. he's just being a little bit of a exactly. bitter ass. Yes, he's very bitter, and I am like, "Yeah, you said that. That's a very nice of you to say in the diary room." Nick, after you just got done snuggling with her for three freaking weeks before that. Yeah. But whatever. Good for Maddie. Go hook up with whoever you want. Exactly. Just yeah. Not in a game easy. for $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, honest, honestly, I mean, whatever. I mean, if that's what she's there to do, uh, let them have fun. Uh, you know, it is what it is. They'll have fun times in jury, as uh, Ramsey has talked about. Uh, yeah, several just, times. Several times, yeah. Ugh. And oh, I, that's what I was thinking tonight. I was like, oh, man, Ramsey's going to be so bummed. Like, not only is Maddie going to be blindsided, but Ramsey's going to be blindsided, too, because he's going to be like, oh, man, i got to wait till after jury. But... Uh, no, it's it's all good for uh, those two lovebirds. Let's talk about the speeches uh, tonight. Nana, what did you think about uh, Maddie and, and Dallas basically trying to do like a... a, a Pull a Godfrey? Very, yeah, yeah, a very poor man's Godfrey man. <laughs> is this going to be a thing now? I hope it is a thing now because like all I've wanted from Big Brother is for it to be like a survival survivor like tribal council where people actually change their votes last minute because that is so exciting. It's nice to know that you have the chance to change people's minds like up until the very last minute, not like until a few hours before. I think it makes it like a way more fun game. So I feel like if people keep on making these speeches, eventually a few people will start switching their votes, hopefully. Right. The evolution of Big Brother. Yeah, Br Brent, did they uh, did they talk about making these big speeches today? Because that was, I mean, I mean, Dallas, we could expect him saying that, but Maddie, I mean, she's going for the kill with Cassandra. Right, I tweeted that something must have happened because they cut the feeds. You know, they cut the feeds early because this show is actually taped. It's not a live show like it is in the U.S. So they cut the feeds early, and something must have happened where this thing really blew up out into the open because, like I said, nobody switched their votes. You know, everybody essentially voted as if they were the majority because. In the earlier parts of this morning, we saw some, you know, uh, fleas dr jumping off the dog, you know, there's, so where people realize, you know, oh, we don't have the votes. We need to pretend like we were always with these people. Cassandra in particular, Phil in particular, they were doing that. So something must have happened earlier today that we didn't see that caused everybody, like everything to come to a head to a point where Maddie felt comfortable enough saying that out in the open because she had not previously said that up until today. 
Yeah, it, it's it's always interesting though those things. Uh, that's the coolest part I think about playing on a season as a fan is getting to see when you're in there is you get to see everything that happens because yeah there are times when the things get cut that completely just get lost from the show. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see to find out where that came came from. But uh, Netta, have you ever said to someone, uh, "Your ass is grass"? No. <laughs> do, do we I don't even know, know what that means. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can, what do, I Brent, have said that. Yeah. Yeah, what does okay. that mean? Yeah, Brent, what does that mean? Because uh, Ned, Ned and I are, are, are very, uh, I mean, I guess Maddie's young too, but like, is this a generational thing? Is this because uh, Netta and I are are par- partially foreign? Like, what <laughs> what is the? Well, I mean, what what is the deal with this, Brent? What is that? I mean? don't know. I've I've said it since I was a little kid. Your ass is grass. Like, it's just like you're just gonna mow somebody over. You know what I mean? It's like you're gonna uh, mow the lawn. Uh, okay, Your ass okay. is grass, and I'm the lawnmower. Yeah, and, I, and I'm the lawnmower. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, just for you guys watching this live, it appears that Netta, we have lost Netta from Oh, well, from I, this. she must have caught what I had. So <laughs> I, I guess uh, Brent's, uh, Brent's internet carried okay, over to Netta. This is, this is a good time to talk about what happened earlier today, or do you want me yes. to wait till Netta comes No, back? no, Excuse keep. Okay. I, please, get into it, Brent. Let's hear Okay, it. cool. All right, well, we can talk about I also want to talk about Tim's reign as HOH, because I have some very thing, uh, some stringent things I want to say about that. Okay, so earlier today, um, the brothers and Joel plotted, they actually plotted some acting for our musical theater boy, Joel. And he uh, decided that he was going to try to appeal to Nikki on an emotional level. Yay, Netta's back. Hey, Netta. Yay, okay. sorry. What's up, okay. Netta? No worries. We're talking about what happened earlier today. I said that the brothers and uh, uh, Joel came up with, a, they hatched a plan to get Nikki's vote back on their side. And what they did was they had Joel... Um, go to Nikki and essentially basically claim to be the victim of some bullying from Jared and his side of the house um, to the point where they had kind of, you know, like sort of faux bullying where they had made fun of him for like, that like he used the bathroom and it really smelled a long time and they were like, they went on for that like for like a couple hours. They wouldn't let it go. And uh, they, they've just said a couple other things that were a little bit untoward. And so I don't think that Joel really felt bad about all this, maybe a little bit, but he really poured it on when he talked to Nikki and said, yeah, I don't really like being around these people. And, um, sorry, I have it written down. Um, uh, Where's it at? Oh, they, I don't really like being around these people. They make me very uncomfortable. Nikki, to her credit, was not having it. She was basically just curling her hair the entire time or straightening <laughs> her hair and was like, well, you need to, you need to expel them from your life. And Joel said, well, I'd like to expel them from the house. And she's like, well, I don't know if that'll work, but you can at least, you know, separate yourself from them a little bit. So like, they had this whole plan to get her on their side. And like the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, this ain't working. Like she is not buying this bullshit, you know? Seriously, it was great. And then the brothers came in and they're trying to like egg it on a little bit. And I, again, to her credit, she, I felt like she kind of knew what was going on or she didn't care. So it was, that was fun to see. And then when she got into a fight with Tim, this is what I want to talk about most of all. Tim's, he had, he had currency in the house at the beginning of the week as his, uh, his reign as HOH. As the week wore on, he continually decided to spend that currency. For what reason, I really can't tell you. Because honestly, of anybody in the house, it really didn't matter who went home for Tim. Now, it eventually mattered once he decided to get his hands dirty but up until that point, he was totally scot-free. Neither one of these nominees was going to come after Tim. And he, he decided for some reason to get his hands dirty. And I, I hated the fact that he tried to say with a straight face um, to Joel that uh, this move would, would be a move that's true to myself. It's not a move against you. Oh, sorry, I said Jared. There's a lot of J's this season. It's Jared. <laughs> <laughs> this, this wait, wait, wait. Was it was it J, was it JP? Are you sure? No, no, no. Sorry. There's a, yeah. It doesn't matter. He said this move would be a true move for myself. You know, meaning if he would break the tie in Dallas's favor, not a move against you, Jared. And you know, you just can't say that with a straight face. He was trying to say to Jared that, you know, this is how I feel about how Big Brother should be played, that uh, that we should keep the big personalities in, we shouldn't let people just, you know, slide by who are basically unlikable like Maddie. Dallas is somebody who wants it, he's a competitor, we should keep him in the game for that reason. But he know, but Jared is a smart guy. He knows what Tim is up to. That's not the real reason Tim wants to keep Dallas in the game. Tim wants to keep Dallas in the game 
at, when he gets invested in it at this point because he knows that Dallas, he, they made a deal. Dallas wasn't going to go after Tim or Cassandra or the brothers if they voted to keep him and he ultimately stayed. Netta, what do you think about Tim's game now? Because going into this week, I, I mean, we've talked about this. Tim was l looking great. I mean, he's in such an awesome position. Um, but but now, I mean, I feel like his game's kind of taken a turn a little bit with this decision to do the whole Koala Bear nomination and, and just how with how this vote really turned out. Do you, where do you see Tim going from here? I okay, so like Tim's game, everyone's like he's like a strategic mastermind. I don't see him that way. I see him as like someone who wants to make really great television. He wants to make just big bold moves, no matter what they are, just so he can get as much airtime as possible, which is amazing. That's why he made it pretty much to Final Two and Celebrity Apprentice in Australia. That's why he won his season because he was the entertaining guy who did what the audience wanted. So that's what I think he's doing here. I wish with like the koala thing, I think got more blood on his hands, even though he didn't want to get blood on his hands, because he made this spectacle out of spectacle, spectacle. You got it. You got, right, it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, he made this huge spectacle out of it, where he had to nominate koala little gummy bears, and he had to do the points, not just like, hey guys, come into my room, tell me who you want, and whoever is the majority gets on the block. He had to make it a big ordeal to make it the airtime, and I think that's what really like got into people's heads, like, oh, Tim is smarter than what we think. So I think he did that to himself. Um, but yeah, I think Tim's always just going to do whatever is better for television and whatever is going to get him more airtime, not necessarily what's going to make him win the game. Right, I agree. I will say that Tim had a good talk with Mitch. Well, I wouldn't say it was a good talk, but he he comported himself well because Mitch Mitch is on to Tim. Mitch knows that Tim has been throwing Mitch's name around as someone who is sliding under the radar and he could get to the end. And Mitch, to his credit, went right to Tim and said, you know, I've, I've been hearing you've said this. And Tim, to his credit, owned it. He did not say, you know, I, I, I didn't say that. He owned it. He said, yeah, I, I did say that, but, you know, I, I just don't know where your head's at. So he did try to, you know, uh, uh, mend fences a little bit. So I feel like they definitely have their eye on each other. And Tim's, the name that's come out of Tim's mouth a lot is Mitch's name because everybody says Jared, everybody says Raul, but the name he really wants to hear is Mitch and Joel. And uh, that was a name that really wasn't being said. By the way, I just want to say really quickly that our, the great Taryn Armstrong, apparently I must have missed something, you know. She does have a life, so I must have missed something. Um, <laughs> so this is what happened. Nikki, this is what happened earlier today. <clears throat> Nikki flipped and told the house that she was keeping Dallas while the feeds cut. Okay. Then an argument broke out between Dallas and Jared and, uh, Dallas and Jared and Mitch. It ended with Dallas raising his voice at Mitch. Ooh. Whoa. So Mitch milked it with Nikki and cried and acted scared. This got Nikki to flip back despite a lot of reluctance because she wanted to protect Mitch. That's also a big thing that's been happening. I know they really haven't covered this on the show, but Nikki, she definitely has a thing for her gaze. She loves Raul. She loves Mitch. And it's definitely a bit of a, you know, there's certain girls that just love their gaze, and so she's one of them. So I'm, I'm serious. It's a thing, you know. And so then uh, Mitch then got her to agree not to tell Tim that she had flipped back until right before the vote. Meanwhile, the brothers and Cass were trying to shake Jared down, thinking that they now had the votes. It appears Nikki managed to keep her mouth shut, so both sides thought they had the votes, which incidentally was what Mitch wanted all along. So there you have Damn it. it. Thank you, Terry. Wow, uh, I'm, uh, Taryn Armstrong! Big shout out to Taryn. Thank you, Taryn. Yeah, I asked for I asked for their help tonight because there's just so much to keep track of. You can only watch one feed at a time. It's just impossible. Oh well, yeah, no, and that's that's the beauty of having all three of you guys, right? Is you guys right. can collaborate, and, and that way you don't go insane. So, uh, you know, well well done by you guys. Uh, wow, so lots to unpack there. First, Netta, what do you think about Mitch going to Tim? Saying to Tim, "Hey, uh, I've heard you've been talking about me. Is that some inf Is that like if you're in Mitch's spot, would you keep that information to yourself if you knew somebody was throwing your name out there?" I think I would. Like everyone plays differently, so I don't know necessarily what he was thinking. Like I wouldn't say that because then I would be like, then he's gonna think Tim's gonna think that I'm being fishy of him, and then he's gonna get more suspicious of me. But I don't know. I've said this for a few like few weeks now that either Tim or Mitch are going to be each other's downfall like one is going to get the other out because um, they both know how the other person's playing and I right. think they're both gunning for each other and it's like the secret battle between the two of them between so I don't know one of them's going to get each other out I think 
Yeah, but like Taryn said on Twitter, you know, with, with this battle coming so soon between Tim and Mitch, this is how somebody like Raul ends up winning the season. So there's that, too. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Raul <laughs> seems like a perfectly nice guy, but... He's a nice oh, man. guy! I love his scarf. It's all good, but... <laughs> You're not the winner of Big Brother Canada 4, girl. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Let's let's jump into uh, the LaVita and Kelsey situation here. So, uh, Netta, what did you think about the speeches? Again, I mean, big night of speeches. I mean, 90, <laughs> minutes, of, 90 minutes of Big Brother, uh, no HOH comp, but four speeches... To, and both sets of speeches were very similar to each other. The first yeah. pair was like, "We're calling you. I'm calling yo. I'm calling you out. I want your blood on these hands, yo." That was the first one. The second pair, Kelsey and Levita, was, "Guys, uh, you know, I've been out of the house for seven days, but my entire game has changed, and I'm gonna play an entirely different game now, and." I want you to use me. This is a game, and me and Kelsey, and, and, and we're best friends now. And I just really, you know, I only have a minute, but I just really want you to know me and Kelsey are best friends. That's very important information. Thoughts on these speeches, Netta? Okay, so stupid. You're literally begging for your life back. Like, you're literally begging these people. And all you're saying during your one-minute speech is how amazing Kelsey is. Like, why would you be telling the house how nice and loyal and amazing Kelsey is? Like, of course they're going to want her back now. Like, why would you do that? Like, I get the aspect that she wanted to maybe she wanted Kelsey's side to see that like she wouldn't be targeting them. Right. Then say that. Say that. Be like, if I was able to get over my beef with Kelsey, I can get over my beef with all of you and start fresh and we can go forward and you can use me th in that way. Not all this like rambling and like, I, I don't know. That was bad. That was brutal. Like I feel like like I liked Maddie and Dallas's speeches, but like these girls, that was pretty brutal. Yeah, and they were definitely Emmett prepared these speeches, uh, Jordan, weren't they? Because I mean, like uh, Emmett had told both of them that they have to be you know fluid, that they have to keep an open mind, that they have to you know play the game, and I felt like that was essentially what both of these speeches were sort of saying, although not in any sort of elegant way whatsoever. But like. <sighs> You disagree. It, I can see you disagree. Was, okay. No, 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 no. Like I agree with you. It's just like I don't get like you know. I think Emmett is arguably the greatest player in the history of this game. But this is a guy who had to ask Peter for ha how to do his speech to Suzette back in season one. Do you guys remember that when he was like, uh, he's like, hey Pete, uh, what's what's the line when he called her out? Well, actually, I don't know if this was aired on the show. I've just heard this story. Okay. Apparently, Emmett ha Peter wrote the speech for Emmett uh, when he called out Suzette and said like, you're guilty, you're making everyone feel guilty, and I don't like that, which it was, a, it delivered it great, but I just find it interesting that, you know, why, why not get Godfrey to give advice for these speeches, right, Netta? Yeah, I mean, I don't think he was there mainly for the speeches. Yeah, but, that's, that's uh, right, like, I guess that's, that's the thing. I, he I, should have I, literally just made, like, straight up point after point after point why they should be back in that game, like, you have a minute, get to the point and say exactly why it would be useful for them to have you in there, and they didn't do that. Yeah, uh, totally, right? And also, like, another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, just uh, Emmett's purpose for being in the house, because we saw this competition on the show, which, like, really didn't have any ramifications. Don't you think it would have been better? I mean, because, yeah, I agree, N Emmett probably didn't, re that wasn't really why he was there to give them advice, but don't you think it would have made more sense for Big Brother to kind of, like, just give them, similar to what you got from, from Emmett and Julianette, it wouldn't have made more sense for him to be like, hey, look, here's your game, this is everything you did wrong, this is what you need to do if you go back in the house because I feel like it, it benefits the show if they get advice from someone like Emmett who actually knows how to play this game really well so that way they don't just go back out the door next week. I guess. I don't know. I feel like these strategy sessions aren't really worth it anyways. Like, I don't, I don't think there's a point to them other than like it being good TV and bringing in ratings of bringing back like this handsome guy like that people want to see. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was essentially why he was there, I felt like. Was, yeah, uh, like see? more eye candy. Like yeah. that's it. <laughs> uh, I didn't watch it on the feeds live, but Brent, apparently uh, Ramsey didn't know who Emmett was. No. Yeah. Sorry, man. What's your what's what, what's your name again? Or what what's an Emmett? The first thing he says to him. <laughs> the first thing he's like, no offense, no offense, but. Like, but like, yeah. who are you? Like, I just yeah. don't know. 
<laughs> like, why just ask somebody else? Don't ask him and look like an idiot. Come on. Um, the, the, I have a question. Sorry. Okay. Ahead, is, is Jared like lying to the house guests about not knowing who Emmett is? Because in his like preseason stuff, he said Emmett and John were his two favorite players. But now he's like being pretty convincing about the fact that like, and I don't see him as that smart of a guy that he's like, continuously lying about not knowing who Emmett is. I right. I mean, I, yeah, I was under the impression that he is telling them that he that he doesn't know who they are, but I was under the impression that he does know who they are. And like he I, he he was sort of like acting like Kelsey, although Kelsey wasn't really acting. Kelsey really didn't know the game very well. I feel like Jared definitely has a better handle on it. And that's yeah. where I, that's what I'm getting from him. See, here's the thing is like in his bio on the website, it said okay. Emmett and John are the players that he would like compare himself to. But then in his interview with with Matt Carter on CarterMatt.com, he said uh, he'd barely seen any Big Brother Canada. He just watched Big Brother US and, and Beast Mode Cowboys, who he compared himself to, which is <laughs> hilarious to this day because Jared and Beast Mode Cowboy have nothing in common other than the fact Who'd that they want to compare themselves to that. Right? right? Like, that that goes to show how little of the show he had probably seen. Like, he had probably only seen post-Amber so Beast Mode. He must just know who, who, like, he must know of them, or like, you know, I, yeah, must, I know right? of he, John Party or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, I think he probably, I think maybe he had heard, like, or maybe heard honestly, uh, yeah, he had heard their names, or in, ca like, in casting, I'm sure that came up for him. They were probably like, hey, don't, do people tell you you're like Emmett? Because you really remind us of Emmett. And he was like, uh... Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, and then when he gets to that stage, he was probably like, "Who's the ca only Canadian you compare yourself to?" And then he would say, "Okay, well, you know, I only know who Emmett and John are because they just right. came up so much." That's what I'm thinking in my head. Who knows? But very interesting point, Netta. That yes, he keeps questioning. You know, this is the second time this season on the show we've seen Jared say, uh, "Who, who's Emmett?" And the first time, right. uh, it seemed like he was joking, but this time it seems yeah. like he's actually being. That's serious. what. That's what confused me. I will say that that Emmett did give some advice to the people who won, who got to yes. spend a little party with him in there, so that was good. Um, he, I, Emmett, ironically, uh, or did he? I think he did, actually. Um, sort of bring up the time that he got screwed over by Dan Giesling. Come, yeah, he did, yeah. But he, he told them about the time that Dan Giesling came into the game and basically screwed him out of $100,000, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Emmett, yeah. sorry, Emmett literally said word for word, like, his speech that he told me in my thing. He told them, like, <laughs> the, I'm not kidding. The whole part where he's like, in my season, I sat them down right before they were evicted, and I told them, like, it was almost word for word exactly <laughs> what he told me. I was like, holy fuck, this is, like, deja vu. Like, well, it's so weird. He's consistent. <laughs> <laughs> he's consistent. And, but you know what? Honestly... <laughs> It's it's a good strategy. It works. So I mean, why not continue? Actually, no, with it's it, not right? because I told Adele, and it <laughs> did not work. That's it, not it depends. Work. It depends. Sometimes it worked for Emmett, just not for 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 Netta. I remember him JP. being like in the in the strategy session too with me, not to bring up my season because it was like freaking two years ago. I'm sorry, no, it's but great. Like, no, we love it. <laughs> he was like. Yeah, so why haven't you made a final two with Adele? Like, you need to go and do that. And I'm like, no, like, that's not going to work for me because Adele has a huge mouth. He's going to go and run and tell people. He was, like, trying to convince me to make this final two. I'm like, you're trying to fuck over my game, aren't you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not taking that advice. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was going to say really quickly that the one thing that I felt both of these people who were trying to get back in the house left out of their speeches was they needed to show some... Uh, contrition. They needed to say, you know, I, I look, I, I made a few bad calls. I made some mistakes. I, I really did. I, I see that now. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say I turned over a completely new leaf, but I, I, I'm willing to work with anybody who's willing to work with me. And, you know, it, she, again, Netta said it best. She she got across to, she wanted, she was, LaVita in particular, was trying to get across to Jared's people, Jared and Jared's people, that she wasn't going to come after them. But rather than insinuate it, why not just tell them specifically, look, I ain't coming after you. You know, I, I made a bad call. That's on me, not on you. I understand why you guys evicted me. I feel like that would have helped out a lot. Did have, you know, because these guys have been on feeds this week, uh, Brent. Did Levita and Kelsey seem to at least own up to their mistakes 
with each other or no? Are they just not? A, are they both convinced like that they did nothing wrong? Again, it's like the chicken and the egg with both of them. It's like who? What happened first? Did, you know, Levita said she was threatened by Jared and Kelsey. You know, hooking up and forming an unbreakable bond. Kelsey is saying that she was the one who was wronged because Levita put her on the block for no reason when they were friends and totally blindsided her. So again, you know, they're just going to go round and round about that. They definitely owned up to the fact that they made some mistakes. But, you know, again, it came back to the fact that they thought there were a few people in the middle, namely Mitch and a few others, Joel, um, although, you know, less to a less extent Joel, but mainly Mitch, who were, you know, sort of playing both sides, and they realized that they were essentially being used to play off of, play against each other by the middle. Although the uh, middle is, I'm, I can't find the middle anymore, JP. I don't really know where we yeah, were talking about. Yeah, the we middle really... the mighty middle for the longest time, and I'm like, uh, where'd she go? I don't see it anymore. <laughs> yeah, and it isn't this really interesting that now the house, I mean, there were, even like, it seemed like a week ago, there were three sides, but now that there was this whole, you know, Mitch versus, you know, Cassandra and the brothers, kind of the slash Tim thing over the the vote this week, do you think now we're really going to see two sides duke it out? I hope so. That's my favorite. Like, who, who doesn't love that when there isn't a middle and there's two sides just straight up going at each other? Like, that's what made, like, what was it, season six so good? Right. <laughs> well, that's what, and season six and, and Big Brother Canada too, BB Can too. That's why I love that season as a fan so much was because... I thought was, I was on there. I'm well, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, besides that, uh, Obviously. No, there are, obvi. there, I will say there are a lot of people on, you know, on Twitter and a lot of people in my life, Alex, I know in particular one of another one of the live feeders who does not really love the whole uh, you know a house divided against itself kind of thing where like you know Big Brother Canada or Big Brother uh, Six U S. Um, but I think we've seen enough of the three sided house and I'm good with what we've seen and I'd like to move to another phase of the game. I like right. that everybody's I like that the line was essentially drawn tonight and everybody knows and everybody knows where everybody voted. There's no oh I didn't vote that way it was somebody else. Everybody knows who voted for who. And uh, I really feel like it's going to be interesting to see who does come back into the house because if it's, I feel like if I had to bet my money, it's probably going to be Kelsey. I feel like she's more because, and mainly from that little package that they showed of the brothers on the sideshow, I feel like that they are far more inclined to work with Kelsey rather than Lavita. And Lavita's, you know, who knows? Yeah. So, Ned, I heard you say you think it's going to be Kelsey then. It's going to be Kelsey. Like, they all hate LaVita. They have this, like, weird hatred for her, so I think it's going to be Kelsey. And, like, so, Phil said he's, like, in love with Kelsey. So. Right. <laughs> I kind of liked I liked that little, that the Jared's drama kind of, of like, you know, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I don't really like that when she goes to talk to Phil, you know, jealous Jared. <laughs> I thought, Jared. I mean, if that right. evolves, I think that could be interesting. Brent, you oh had my God, something to say. That was the say. stupidest thing, though. Uh, it, it was, was definitely a stupid thing. What I was going to say was, you know, I know that they are trying to get some drama out of this whole thing needing to be unanimous. However, I want to make a point that if if it if it gets to be like 8 to 3, I don't know how many people are voting. Is it, what is it, 11 people, 10 people? I think it's 10 people because they were, yeah, eh, around there. Uh, 10 people, yeah. Uh, 10 people, 11? I believe. Yeah. Eh, hell uh, I whatever. Uh, <laughs> actually, no, it, it's, it's 11. It's, it's 11. I think, or, or maybe it's ten. No, it's ten. I, I was right the first time. It's, it's ten, ten because it was there was, it was it was going to be four to four, and there were two yes. nominees, and plus there was an HOH tiebreaker. Yes, so there's going to be ten people voting. What I was going to say was, if it's sort of seven to three or eight to two, no matter how much those two people or three people want to hold out, they're going to be aware of the fact that they're in the minority, and the longer they hold out and be an asshole about it like sort of what Godfrey did on last season of Big Brother Canada, the more they are putting a target on themselves. So I do not think it's going to last near as long as what happened last season on Big Brother Canada 3 because those three people, they knew where everything stood and there was every reason for them to stay in that room and fight for a juror. Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? But this, and they were, and Ashley tweeted, or Sarah tweeted, that they were in there for four and a half hours. I cannot imagine this meeting going an hour. Because if you're in the minority, you're quickly going to switch and go to the other side. Because you don't want to be the asshole who is, you know, forcing everybody to stay there talking about it and get yourself uh, nominated next week. 
Just to play devil's advocate, though, okay. uh, Netta, don't you think that with this, I mean, yes, that I think is the correct way to think about this, Brent, but Netta, don't you think with the number of illogical players in the house, there could be a chance that people just stand their ground and say, no, like, I, I don't care, I'm staying here all night. Um, There could be, but I don't know, these people are weird, like... Uh, you're right, you're right. I feel like if it was filled with a bunch of super fans who knew how the game worked, they would probably they back die. down and yeah. they would just be like, okay, okay, like, I'll just agree with you, but just, who do you think? Like, who do you think would be someone well, would, that would hold their ground and just be like, no? Well, I could see if, uh, like, this is probably not the way things are going to go, but if it was the other way around, if it seemed like, okay, Levita's definitely going back in, I could see Maddie. Uh, just being like, no, uh, no, Levita's not going back in. I'm not unanimous. No, I want Kelsey. Or same with Cassandra. I could totally see that. Although, again, th th they both have beef with Kelsey, sort of. So I guess that one's a little bit tougher. But um, see, if Dallas was in there, Dallas isn't in there anymore. But again, like, Nikki is a little bit stubborn. Although in this case... I feel like if someone yeah. tells her what to do... It's interesting, because this, I think, is going to be completely public. If they said, okay, guys, go off on your own for an hour, have fun, go talk amongst yourselves, and then come back, I think maybe then that would kind of speed right. things up a little bit, because it's public. We're not going to be... Mitch can't just go to Nikki and say, uh, yeah, you know what? You know what, Nikki? Uh, you know, just come with me. This is what you... Although, maybe he will do that. I don't know, but... Um, I, I feel like she'll. I, I don't feel like she has a real bone in this fight, though. You know, I like. I, that is true. That is true. But I'm just trying to come come up with yeah, an example I know, I know. here. Um, what happens if it's not unanimous? That's what I wanted to know. Like what? Like what? Like what if somebody just says no? I'm not going to make it unanimous. What then? Do both exactly. of them come back in? Well, that, well that's like, what I want to know. I feel yeah. like that that should be the twist, right? Should that not be it? Is like okay, if you guys can't decide within an hour. Right, They're both going back like in, that. and you know what? And you know what? I feel like the pe people would be like, "All right, fine, let's do it," because the stubborn person would just say, "You know what? Okay, well, I, gu I guess it sucks that uh, you know, Kels I don't want Kelsey coming back in, but I'll have Levita come back in to get right? Kelsey back in." Like, I think exactly. if you're Joel, I think that's probably what you're thinking, right? I guess so they aren't gonna. Maybe they aren't gonna let them eat because they're all definitely are in. They're in that room, so they can't really go off and do anything. So I mean, no. again, the, I'm really, I'm really. It's a shame because they've cut the feeds, so this is gonna be great feeds and, and nothing. And nothing, exactly. We're do you guys like the way that Big Brother is doing this, that like the house votes, or would you guys prefer if it was like Canada or if there was a competition or something? I'm that glad is a it's great question, Canada. Netta. I'm glad yeah. it's not Canada, and I feel like any competition is eventually, like, no matter what they did, I feel like any competition is going to be weighted to one side or the other. If it's endurance, probably Levita. If it's smarts, probably Kelsey, because she did really good in that questions comp. So I feel, I, I like the fact that they're trying something new and forcing it into the house and leaving it in the house's hands. Yeah, I mean, the reason why, I mean, there. Personally, I, I'm with Brent. I think that it's great that there is no Canada votes thing uh, because it, I, I, they haven't really done that really this season. Right. So You're it, at the it, mercy it, of the editors then. It, it, exactly. And I think that you know the what I would like to see is maybe just like a crapshoot thing where it's just like, all right, it, it's a comp and like anyone can win. Sort of like that shuffleboard thing that Jocasta almost won in BB16, <laughs> except there's no, there's no downside to Jocasta going in the house. Oh, um, flashbacks, Jordan. <laughs> but... But the good thing that I really do like about this is that the house is deciding who they want to come back in. So that means whoever they choose to have come back in, it's not going to be somebody who is completely a social pariah. It's somebody who the house says, okay, we're, we're choosing this person over this person. They might still gun for them, but they at least have somewhat of a chance of making a little bit of a run in the game and sticking around and making things interesting. And, and that way, it's you know, it's not like last season where you know the person comes right back in the house and it's somebody who didn't have the greatest relationships and goes right back out the door. If it had been a house decision out of the first five to come back in, you know, Ginger Ninja would have come back and, and it would have just been a party for everyone and he would have stuck around for a few more weeks. So, uh, you know, it, that... that that's what I do kind of like about this, um, and I, I'm just excited to see what happens. Uh, personally, Kel Netta, you said you want Kelsey, or you think, or sorry, you think Kelsey's going to go back in. 
who do you want Kelsey to go back in or do you want Levita to go back in? Uh, I don't really know. The only reason I don't want Kelsey going back in is I don't want to see a freaking showman. Like showman is bore me, and she's gonna go back in. She's gonna be with Jared, and that's just so freaking boring. So I'd right. rather have Levita go back in because she's more of a wild card. But I feel like. Like, I like that Canada's not voting. I hate the whole Canada voting thing, because that's just unfair. Um, I feel like it should just be a competition where they prove how much they want this. Like, literally, hold a button, whoever lets go of that fucking button, I, I who can can't hold on for 24 hours, yes. like, it proves how much you want it. It's not a scale thing. It's not like one person's better at holding a button than the other one. It should be something along those lines, I think. Prove how much right. you want this. I, I love that, and I wish that they'd go back to, like, speaking of season six, I mean, I wish they would go back to that competition. Right? I, like, um, I really what the hell, JP? Season six. <laughs> I mean, well, they, I think... that's, that's the most epic competition, and they've never done it again. Like, well, that one, what was the one where they were, like, in cages or something? Yeah, in cages, and they had to go into different ones, where someone peed. Wasn't wasn't that that was the button one, was it not? Yeah, that was the button one, right? Where they what and every and every, of then? and every three buttons they had to open up a box, and the, the box had like flies. That is one, or... but uh, there's like a different one I'm thinking of too. I can't oh. remember. It was something along the same lines as like the button one. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, people in the chat uh, on robiswebsite.com, let us know if uh, if you see, if you know what we're talking about here. Maybe I'm uh, just on crack. Who knows? <laughs> well, the only... <laughs> We're definitely not on crack, man. But if, if there was... The only thing I can think of... Okay, Jorge Alvarado in the chat is saying Allison peed in the cage, BB4. So uh, yeah. maybe it was Big Brother 4? Yeah, okay, so what was that competition? See, yeah, Big Brother 4... Yeah, yeah, Big Brother 4 is uh, the one season that I haven't rewatched in a while, so I actually yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, one. it was like legit... It was like cages or something, wasn't it? Or bars or... Because they were in like a glass box for the buttons, weren't they? Yes, I, I they were. It was, it was yes. a, it was a yes. glass box for the buttons. They were, yes. yeah, in six, yeah. Okay, I'm going to look this up because I know there okay. was something similar and someone peed. But okay. Like... All right. okay, so hey, while hey, I was hey. looking this up, yeah, Brent, uh, before you go ahead, yes. uh, I just want to ask you, who should, uh, just from watching the feeds and watching the reactions of the house guests, who would be, for, for the fans, who should we be rooting for to get back in there, Kelsey or Levita? I think, I mean, it, it just depends on what dog you have in this fight. By the way, I said a bone earlier. I don't know why I said that. It's a dog <laughs> you have in the fight. Anyway, uh, again, I some people like Levita, some people like Kelsey. Um, I feel like the one thing I don't like about Levita is that she was very with Joel, and Joel has really been annoying the living shit out of me lately. Why? I am not a fan How of How dare Joel. you? Why? Why? Explain, How explain. dare you, Brent? It's just uh, like his faux kind of victimhood. It just was tired, and he's just... Like the whole crying last week when Levita went home. It's like you just got to know her, and she was basically stalking you the entire well, well, time. In, in, uh, Brent, Brent, Brent. Uh, first off, Stockholm Syndrome, I think, maybe a little <laughs> bit for, for Joel there. Uh, having Levita trapped with him all the time. He just falls in love with her. But, um, you know... He just annoys me, JP. I can't okay, explain it. Okay, well, you know what? Fair. Some people fair. don't like me. And that's know? fair. And you know what? That's fair. And that's the same thing with me. A lot of people dislike me, but it's just like... <laughs> but it's true. And it's a human thing. It's You can't love or like every single person. And the Big Brother really proves that. Because right. every season... I don't care who you are, you never watch the show and you never say, I love every single house guest this season. Right. They're all phenomenal and great, fantastic people. No. The, you are good. There's people you love and there's people you hate. And it's just hard to describe. Sometimes there's reasons for it, but other times it's just like, you know what? I just don't like that person. Me personally, Brent, I love Joel to death. Uh, mm. What do you think about his spot, though, now? Let's talk. And, and sorry to interrupt. Net, Netta, uh, did you happen to I'm see... I'm researching. I'm researching. Okay, so Netta, <laughs> Netta is researching. Uh, wh where is Joel sitting at right now, Brent? Because, um, you know, I saw people... I don't know who it was tonight said that yeah you know if we get rid of Dallas we take we take him away from Joel and right. I was very I was like what like Joel and Dallas are now perceived as some pair and I, I know Dallas was saying in the diary room last night he was like yeah you know Canada uh wink with the little twinky twinkly sound uh you know me you know Joel is the only guy in here who's got his uh, uh his balls and his smarts are just as big as mine are I was like uh. I, I don't I don't know about uh, the smarts there, Dallas. I think you might be insulting Joel a little bit there. But where is Joel sitting at right now? Because the middle has... He's not in the away. middle, that's for sure. The, I mean, yeah, me, the middle's gone away, and Dallas is now gone. So where does he stand? I don't know. It's very intriguing to me because Mitch and Joel had a conversation where Mitch told Joel... 
he said, you know, um, well, we should decide what we want to do, and whatever we decide, I would like to vote the same way as you. But this is the second week in a row that they have voted apart after we were, you know, totally, like, slobbering over them for their bromance earlier when they, you know, ho hoodwinked everybody with the rock, paper, scissors pre-planned thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. So, um, I don't really know what's happened. There's definitely been a schism that's developed where you know it all it all it all happened when Levita went home. When Joe lost Levita, he definitely just sulked and he sort of you know he went over to that side of the house, that side being Dallas. And um, oh, shoot, I see the link. Yes, perfect. Um, and then uh, right, and then and then um, when you know when Levita went home, Mitch. Uh, that was the same night Kelsey went home. Mitch has gone over to take Kelsey's place in the third wheel. So that's why they have uh, essentially separated. But I do not like Joel's position in the house currently. I don't know anybody who's going to necessarily come after him. But I also think he's a potential nominee for a lot of people as a well. I'm going to put you up too. And as we've seen this season on Big Brother, anything can happen once you're on the block. <sighs> Poor Joel. Uh, let's. I hope he doesn't go home and he doesn't get blindsided or anything like that. But uh, yeah, whatever. I don't know. I I was feeling so good. Like three. This is this is Jordan Parhar all over again. Not just like <laughs> just not as bad. Just not as bad. It's like yeah. it's, is, it's prolonged Jordan right. Parhar. Is, is the, if like, the jury is starting this week, we should fear for Joel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, poor, poor Joel. Uh, okay, so Netta, you've given us this link. Yes. Uh, so do you know it's which called, competition this is? Yeah, a season four steel cage match, um, and Erica won it. And they had to, there was three, like, cages that they pretty much had to stand in, and in order for them to advance to the next cage, they, uh, two people just had to leave. So oh, I, I, I guess it was there it is. And I remember okay. her, like, Someone, I guess it was Allison. She was squatting. She like just full on peed and like. Right. I do remember that, but I couldn't remember like what part of a competition it was. I gotta go back and see this. this yeah, this no, is... it's been a while since I've seen that season. Right, right. Um, JP, I just want to really want to quickly say, like, I had a few things to say about everybody. This, you know, who basically had any hand in what happened this evening. Um, Jared was like, it was a bad week for Jared. You know, like his whole thing about being selfless and wanting to say something that was honest to the brothers to help them out totally backfired in his face and almost got the guy who was coming after his ass to stay. It was one vote. If, if, if Nikki doesn't have a breakdown, then Jared is totally bamboozled by Dallas staying this week. And I, I just I just hated that. Dallas did good work, although he ended up not staying because I, I, I did like his campaigning though. Maddie had a horrible week even though she ended up staying so this just shows even you can play really good and still have a horrible week. Um, Tim I, I've never seen anybody lose as much currency as I have Tim in this season of Big Brother. Like he, he started off the week great he looked benevolent, he looked above it all he looked above the pettiness as Taryn said on Twitter and then by the end of it he's like totally got mud all over him. Uh, yeah, not a good look for for uh, Tim. Uh, guys, for those of you live in the chat, I did just post the link to uh, the site, the, cool. the link that Netta sent us, so that you guys can go you gotta scroll down this, to find it. Yeah, <laughs> scroll down to season four. And uh, shout out to Jorge Alvarado in the chat for the, being the first one to uh, point out the steel cage uh, competition. Uh, yeah, the only other comp I could think of where someone uh, soiled themselves was Cowboy in BB5 uh, when he uh, accidentally pooped his pants uh, on one of those endurance comps. Uh, Thank you for that. A good time. I'm sure people have like peed themselves during those um, the water endurance comps where they have yeah, to yeah. Stand there. Like, I'm pretty sure Jill said that she peed while she was oh. up there with Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't say anything. Just it do keeps it. You, it God. keeps you warm, so why not? Well, well especially in that one that Jill yeah. did. Yeah, of course. That was probably the difference in her winning. <laughs> oh man! So so uh, so breaking news: uh, Jillian peeing her pants. In that I'm not positive about that, by the way. <laughs> she, yeah, she's not positive. Not. We don't know this for a fact. We don't know this for a fact. Nothing on the happy hour is a true fact. So no. don't go around saying anything that. Oh my God, Netta started rumors. Uh, no, definitely that did not happen. Okay, uh, Netta, how are you doing for time? Whatever, I'm just chilling. <laughs> okay, Ned is just chilling. Brent's just Brent. You're good. You want You guys want to take some questions? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Let's take some questions. Right, Bring it. Let's take some questions. Okay, here we go. Uh, this one's from uh, Tamara S. She says, 
What's your thoughts on Dallas's game ending because Nikki was jealous Tim prepared a bath for Cassandra? Uh, so we kind of talked about that a little bit already. Um, but just let's eulogize Dallas a little bit here. I, I talked about this uh, with the Shield on Sunday, Netta, but it, wasn't it really interesting watching Dallas, uh, his his story arc throughout Big Brother because he really you know started off with making a lot of the fans mad and the people online really despised him, but now... He's kind of leaving as a little bit of a hero. I don't really get why people think he's a hero now. Can you explain <laughs> that to me? <laughs> well, it's because here's what. Well, yeah, Brent, I mean, I'll give my theory. Uh, or actually, I'll let Brent speak, and then I'll, I'll elaborate if uh, we disagree. But I think we're probably on the same page here, Brent. Oh, you faded out for a second for me. So you're still talking about Dallas? Yes, Dallas. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. I I loved where Dallas was this week. Um. Not not the fact that he was on the block, but I love the fact that he did some honest to God, really good campaigning. He told people what they needed to hear. If people said something to him and said, you know, will you keep you know A, B, and C safe? The answer is yes. And <laughs> He said yes, whereas Maddie was like, well, I really don't know, you know? So, I mean, like, she was totally playing with fire. Like, again, she she was having an argument with Ramsey, who was this, one of the swing votes, as, as, as early or as late as last night. She was literally having an argument with Ramsey as late as last night, and he holds all the power in her game. So, like I said, Maddie, terrible week. Uh, Dallas did great because I feel like he he really he tried and he put his. I felt like he put himself out there and he was he was fun and he was somebody you would remember. And there are a lot of people you ain't gonna remember on this season. Yeah, and, and you know, for as much as Dallas, some of the things got a little irritating, like you know the wink to the camera. Arissa the Rocket, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I think that, like Peter said on the sideshow tonight, it just there's something that's just so genuine about Dallas that I think that a lot of people enjoyed, and I oh. personally like that as well. And seeing him cry tonight during the the messages, I mean, that really yes. I mean, I, that, I, go I, ahead, Brent. I want. I'm sorry. I have to rant for a second. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm. So I must. I must because how. How mean are these people? You have, a, you have two girls who came out of the house who could not care less that they have a second chance. Kelsey looked like she wanted to vomit when Arissa told her, you have a second chance to get back in the house. I, who was crying, who desperately wanted to get back into the house, that said to Arissa, you know, she's got a, I got something to tell you. And, and he's like, uh, well, tell me I got a way to get back in the house. And instead she's like, no, you don't have a way to get back in the house, but you remember the two bitches that we evicted last week? We're going to put one of them back in the house instead, and you get to watch all of it. Aren't you special? Like That yeah. was so mean. So yeah, right? Mean. What like, was that? Like, okay, Netta, you know, you and I both, like, you know, we've talked to Rissa and stuff like that, and we can both attest to the fact that she is just, like, the coolest, nicest human ever. But that is probably the most ruthless thing Arissa's ever well, done, right? it's obviously not Arissa's choice to do that. They just wanted to, like, they wanted his face at, on the TV just showing his reaction to like, oh, that's a twist. That's interesting. But like, you know production, they don't care about feelings. They're not thinking <laughs> of the fact that like, this poor guy is like, oh, fuck, I don't get this opportunity now. All they want is that screenshot of him like reacting to the twist. Like and not, I give him I give him a ton of credit because yeah. he comported himself very well. He said, you know, you know, good for them. I'm sure they're going to make the most of their opportunity. I would have literally thrown that stool, like exactly. ran off stage, like filled like, his fingers <laughs> up, like no. Like, like what about me? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Uh, okay, let's take another question. This one is from Erica F. on Twitter. She says, uh, Netta, if you were on this season with all of the women targeting each other, what would you do? Would you be nervous? Now, you were on a season, Netta, in which you tried to get the girls together, but it I just... I pretty much on a similar season, let's be right? honest. Like, I yeah. think the girls right? on my season were actually more catty. If you really look at them, like, they were a lot more catty, but... They just didn't succeed at getting each other out as as well as these girls did. Um, I don't know. I would obviously try and make it work, just like I did on my season. If it doesn't work, you cut your losses and you move on. Well, you know, just to show you how close we were to having another girl evicted. If you know, like I said, if Nikki doesn't get upset about her bath or doesn't get a little jealous with Tim, another girl was going to be evicted tonight. I literally thought it was going to happen up until about 24 hours ago. Well, so. it literally again came down to cattiness. That's why somebody was evicted, not because of gameplay, because of cattiness. Somebody else was evicted, and it just happened yeah. to be a boy. Yeah, and they're already plus one boy because of the brothers. 
So yeah. like, it's such a weird imbalance this season. Yeah, it, it, it's so strange, but I'm, I'm loving it. I mean, really, it's... I can't wait to see how this next month or so unfolds because right. it's already been so good and there's still so much more stuff to come. Uh, here's another one. Uh, do you think uh, Maddie slash Cass rivalry will be replacing the Jared slash Dallas one and would it be as clearly divided? That one is from uh, Gourmet Guy at 50 Cent's brother on Twitter. Uh, yeah, what do you guys... So it, it, this was really interesting because we saw uh, this huge speech where Maddie and Cassandra Maddie and Cassandra basically going at each other. Cassandra staying in the die room. Uh, what's Maddie's name again? Which was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> but then, as soon as it gets announced that Levita might come back in the house, immediately they run to each other like, we got to work together. We got to work together. So, Netta, is this going to last? No. The only thing that could bring them together was the thought of getting another girl out. So, that's not a good thing to base a. Well, it, it, that shows you how bad of a, a game player Levita is that she can unite these two people who absolutely <laughs> despise each other, absolutely hate each other, and they were sitting there on the couch like they were best friends. That's true. Yeah, it's just, isn't that such a weird, like, psychological thing is the, people can hate each other, but, like, the hatred or, like, the dislike of someone else can bring, like, two enemies together and they can just be like, yeah, like, we both dislike this person, let's be friends. It's just so, like, uh, I just have always found that so to be so strange. Uh, I love it. I, I love, oh, I love the great, fact, but, I love yeah. the fact that both of them are so willing to put aside their differences to save their own asses. Seriously, that's what it's about. Self, self-preservation, self Jordan. That's what this is about. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I mean, at the at the end of the day, as Beast Mode Cowboy would say, that's that's really all that it really it comes down to. Uh, okay, I have one more here. This one is from uh, the BB president. And the BB president says, uh, how do you think the complete lack of solid alliances has affected this season? Every house guest seems to be at risk, in my opinion. Um, yeah, this is really interesting because usually, I mean, by this point last season, uh, we, I mean, I just saw the Big Brother Canada's, like, 100th episode, uh, like, little video they put out on Twitter. And you mean there was 100 episode. 100 <laughs> episode. Uh, and in that video, they had a clip from season three and all the alliances, like, all the names that were in that. And I, I swear there was like 12 alliances and they were pretty much all made by this point in the game last year. This season, and, and you know, we have like this going on in the die room. We have like, you know, uh, you know, this going on in the die room. This season, we just have like Raul doing this and that's really it. Uh, and, and for people listening to this in the audio, this is bad podcasting. You want to check out the video on YouTube, subscribe to Reality <laughs> TV or Happens on YouTube, and yeah. come to this point and you'll see what yeah, I'm saying. it's great pantomime. Uh, <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, what, what do you think? Like, this has to change at some point, right, Natalie? Like, don't you think alliances are going to really start getting built now? Like, true alliances. No, I think people are going to just align with each other for whatever's better for their game, but I feel like the true alliances, which is, like, Kelsey's going to go back in probably. So it's right. going to be the third wheel, and then just random ones forming here and there to get them where they need to in the game, and then they're going to break it off again. It does make it a lot easier to follow than your guys' season was, because your guys' freaking season was so hard to follow with all those alliances, and I was, like, watching feeds and, like, writing notes and stuff. I'm like, I can't I can't do this. Like, everyone's aligned with each other. You guys all had names, because you were super fans, so you were all into the whole name thing. Like, just, <laughs> I guess that's a cool thing to do. Um, <laughs> I do think that if Kelsey comes back into the house, that she's going to, of course, naturally go back to Jared and Raul and Mitch. And, they, you know, and the house is going to see that because they already see Jared and Mitch and Raul as a threesome. So now with Kelsey making it a foursome, that's, I mean, I feel like everybody else in the house is going to look at them and go, we got problems. We got to break this up again. So yeah, I feel and like, like an that... alliance will form to probably like target them, and as soon as they do yes. target them, they'll that alliance will break up, and then another one will form for like another game move, and then it's just gonna keep like like voting blocks pretty much. <laughs> Survivor Cambodia, Survivor. here we go, <laughs> second chance uh, happening on BB Cam for this season, and and it's been great. Um, all right, I, I think that does it for the questions tonight. Uh, Netta, Brent, anything you guys want to add before we wrap things up? No, I actually want to thank the BB president, though, because he's been catching me up on feeds, so thank you. <laughs> yes, he's great, too. I, I, I follow him as well, and also uh, I want to say this HOH, I think, 
massively important. I really do because I think if somebody from if somebody not from the third wheel or Kelsey if she's if she comes back into the house and she's allowed to compete, if somebody not from them wins, I feel like one like two of the four of them will probably go up on the block and Mitch could be in a little bit of danger because his name has been percolating a little bit underneath the surface. Percolating, uh -oh. that's a great word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost like it's almost as if you took that from uh, Levita's speech tonight, Brent. That was such a great. Oh word. yeah, yeah. She had lots of great words in her speech. Yeah. No, uh, she did. Uh, by the way, Netta, I'm I'm in a Big Brother Canada draft, and Mitch is also my pick to win. So yes. yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody's rooting for Mitch, and you know the one person who's not rooting for Mitch, by the way is Tim, and you want to know the reason why he's not rooting for him? Obviously, the, the fact that he's competing against him, it, besides the fact. He thinks that Mitch is a really boring player. He doesn't want boring players at the end. Tim is playing for the TV show. Exactly. He wants people, exactly. He wants people who are fun, who, who people root for. Like He wants the Dan Geeslings of the world at the end. He does not want the Andy Herons of the world at the end. And he, he looks at Mitch as an Andy Heron or a Steve from, uh, Steve Moses from Big Brother 17. He looks at them who, you know, don't add a lot to the TV show. I'm not saying those people didn't because I love their games, but that's what he's saying. So uh, that's, that's, that's sort of a downer that that's why he doesn't like Mitch. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think Tim just does whatever he thinks the audience wants because they'll make him more popular in their eyes, which is which just is so stupid. Yeah, yeah, so stupid. But, I mean... Like, it works, it, obviously, because it works. Canada, but it's just annoying for me because that's, oh, Mitch is playing course. the type of game I was playing, so I know Tim would have targeted me, which is annoying. <laughs> Well, uh, well, Nada, uh, you know, all stars. Just saying, you might need well, to, you know, need to keep that in not mind. Happening, like everyone needs to get over freaking all stars. <laughs> I'm just saying, gotta watch out for Tim, Nada. Gotta watch out for Tim. Do you guys think that you. that would be a possibility? Like, if Tim does really well in this game, let's say he doesn't win. Let's say he gets like final three or final four or something. Is it a possibility he could come back if there was an all stars? Well, sure. Why, Why not? not? Right? I mean, he's from Australia. I, but, 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 but Nada, Nada. Here's the thing: is I think. Big Brother Canada really opened Pandora's box this season, but I, I think we could see, honestly, I think we could see Chicken George on Big Brother Canada All-Stars because they asked Jace, so if they can ask Jace, they can ask whoever the hell they want on their All-Star season. Whether yeah, that I think be, Big right? Brother Canada, they view themselves as like a melting pot almost in a way. I think they're mm -hmm. proud of the fact that they had all these different nations like coming around trying to get on their show. So it's definitely a Pandora's box that's been opened. I, I, I don't really know that they can close it. I mean, if, if, if Tim does really well and he's really popular and the producers love what he's giving us this season, then I think it's a fair shot to say that you know maybe he would come back in an all-star season. Okay, uh, guys, uh, thank you to everybody for, for joining us tonight on the Happy Hour. Really appreciate it. Great. Netta, good Brent, great job tonight. This is show, a really, really good show. Really yeah. good show. I had a lot of fun. Uh, for you guys in the chat, uh, quickly give me some ideas for hashtags because uh, I'm not really thinking of any. And while you guys do that, I just want to remind you guys, please subscribe to the Happy Hour. Go to robbiswebsite.com slash happy hour. That's happy hour with an R at the front. Uh, make sure you don't ever miss an episode of us on iTunes. That You can subscribe there. You can also, while you're there, leave a rating and a review for the podcast. That's one way you can really help me out. So if you like this podcast, or maybe if you don't like this podcast, and uh, you want to leave a rating and review, uh, you can do that while you're there as well. And uh, for three people at the end of the season, you guys are going to win a Jordan Parhar-related prize. So while you're there, uh, leave a rating and review, and make sure you leave your name, so that way I know uh, who it is if you happen to win the draw. Uh, at the end of the season. Uh, don't forget as well, subscribe on YouTube, Reality TV Rehap Ups, and uh, leave some comments as well on robiswebsite.com. I love uh, reading the comments at the end of every podcast. It's always one of my favorite things to do. Uh, okay, so we've got a couple... Here we go. So we've got a couple... Hashtags, we have, uh, hold on, this is uh, ref refreshing for me here. Uh, hashtag no feeds follow, hashtag Jordan not Jared, hashtag Netta and then the greater than sign uh, party. Uh, uh, yeah, I was thinking hashtag Jared, Jared Parhar because uh, Brent just kept calling me Jared all night. So and I was totally oblivious to it that one time. Oh my gosh, I was like, really? I did that? 
<laughs> that was the, that was amazing, by the way. I lo- I loved that. That was so good. Uh, maybe in the when we do like a happy hour, like f- episode number five hundred special, Brent, we'll come back to this episode and we'll pull that clip. I'm I going to go back great. and look at this because I don't even know when it happened. Okay, well we'll 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 go back and we'll, we'll okay. watch it. I- I'm gonna go watch it too because I love it personally. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to do something a little different for you guys today. Normally I do my normal sign off spiel, um, but actually today. We got a song from uh, my buddy Puya on Twitter. So he sent me... Let me see if I can find uh, Puya's Twitter handle because I think you guys should go follow him or at least send him some love uh, for sending this song. And my internet's probably going to crap out now now that I say this. But anyway, he wrote a song uh, and he wanted me to play it at the end of the podcast. And I thought he did a really great job. So he's at uh, Puyaism. So that's at P O O. Y A I S M, and he wrote this really great song about Dallas uh, that he wanted me to play on the show. So I will play this at the very end. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, for Netta Kalantar and Brent Walgamont, I'm Jordan Parhar. Hashtag Jared Parhar. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Peace out. Hold up, let me explain. My name's Dallas and I'm kinda going insane. Don't know what to think about me. Don't worry, I don't give a koala, you see. This beetle is mine, I'ma make it number three. Because beast from the east, my name is Dali. Or if you're Willow, you can call me Daddy. Don't worry, it's all gravy baby with me. This week is absurd, don't know what to call. Oh no, it no, died! So no, good. hold on, hold on, hold on. It's 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 gonna keep going. Hold on, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great. I don't really care if I'm the real target, but if I am, here you are. We're happy I will with Nedda and Jordan Parhar. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Where can we like share that's, that? That's so good. So, so Netta, I will actually. Uh, I'm gonna email Puya, and I'm gonna see if I can maybe get this on SoundCloud or something somehow. I'll send you that, and then uh, if he's cool with us sharing it, we'll we can tweet it up. But I thought that was great. I think he did a great job. So, if you so guys <laughs> want to go tweet him and let him know uh, the rhyming of Parhar uh, and uh, Netta with Jordan Parhar, I love that. Or you can almost do like Netta Kalantar, Jordan Parhar, Cassandra oh. Shahinfar. I don't know. You can figure all the brown out. people. All, all, exactly. All of us together. Uh, but anyway, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to join us. This Sunday we'll be live after the episode. Uh, I have been talking to a guest, but I haven't 100% confirmed it, so I don't want to say who it is just yet uh, because I don't want to hype this person up and then ha- have it fall through. So join us Sunday night after the episode, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8, 15, or, sorry, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern. We'll see you then. All the best. Take care.